inkling or thought that this person's trying to give me. Thank you. And then, just like this. Thanks. Um, <clears throat> I have a mother who's dying, mm -hmm. and I hate her. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know how to deal with it because I should be compassionate. She's completely closed off to like living in denial, basically. Yep. And, and I living have in denial about what she's done to you. E oh yeah. Oh, definitely. Yep. No, no. I try and explain to her that what how she is being. It was done to her by her, from her female lineage, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And I cop, I copped it in yep. the end, right? Yep. Yep. Now I don't know how to deal with her because she's going to go to the other side soon, mm -hmm. and I would like to be nice to her. Mm -hmm. But every time I see her, I feel irritated. Mm -hmm. And I'm also getting the feeling of irritation from, like, coming from within myself towards other women that are possibly similar, like this nice lady next to me. Yeah. I feel completely irritated <laughs> by right now. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know how to. <laughs> Interesting law of attraction that you're sitting yeah, next yeah, to. Yeah, it <laughs> is. <laughs> <laughs> the key is to not feel heard about that, just to feel about that. Yeah, yeah, so I would like to be able to assist, but I feel completely helpless. Well, firstly, um, for you to be able to properly assist, um, you're going to need to go through... Now, now, firstly, I want to state firstly, your mum has done some very damaging things to you, right? So she has definitely done some damaging things. Damage to you. And she is also in complete denial of her damage that has been done to you as well. So she, she does not even agree that she's done anything wrong towards you. Is that not right? Yep. So, so we must first acknowledge the truth of that. The fact is your mum's in a pretty dark place if she can't acknowledge to her own children the damage she's done to her own children. Yep, and uh, it's pretty sad that, that it's like that. So, so mum's in a dark place already, isn't she? From an emotional perspective, she's in spiritual and emotional darkness in the sense that she has no understanding of love whatsoever, really, in, in this place. So that's her condition. We need to state her condition accurately. So every person who ever helps another person in the spirit world or on earth must first learn to accurately see the person. And that includes accurately seeing them with the things that they've done in terms of the darkness that's within them. It's not judging them. You just need to know where they're at before you can help somebody move from where they're at. Now, here's you. Now... This damage and denial have created feelings in you, right? Now, the feeling you describe is a feeling of anger, but underneath the feeling of anger is obviously a feeling that an addiction is not getting met or a need is not getting met. And underneath the addiction would be a fear that there's something wrong with you that's caused your mum to treat you the way she has. And underneath that will be a, quite a lot of grief inside of yourself. Does that make sense? So that's what's in you about how she's treated you. Now, you can do a couple of things with that. You can wait until mum recognises what she created. That's her creations that she created in you. Does that make sense? Now, you can wait until this person who is already in total denial and who you've had many chats with already about the subjects of what she's done and she's been in total denial about all those things that you've talked to her about as well, and you can wait for her to recognise what she's done before you change, if you want. It's not a very advisable course of action because she, being the person who created the damage, is going to have a much more difficulty than you to see the damage she's created. Does that make sense? So, that's one course of action, which is a course of action many people on earth take, which is they wait and wait and wait and wait and wait until the person who's done the damage feels bad about the damage they've done. Now, my suggestion to a person is never do that, but there are lots of people who do that, and often they are waiting hundreds, if not thousands of years as a result, waiting for the person to feel sorry for what they've done. 
So what you're waiting for from her, to a degree, is a feeling that she is sorry, yes? You want her to feel sorry for what she's done. No. Pass the mic back and... Because I can feel you do want her to feel sorry, but let's fire. Well, not sorry as such. I just want to feel that she's not in my space, so to speak. Yeah, no, that's your denial now. Yeah. Your denial is you'd just like her not in your life at all. That's what you'd prefer. Pardon? What you'd prefer is for her to not be in your life at all. Correct. Yeah, you're exactly. Yes. And that's anger. Yeah. <laughs> Does that make sense? And underneath that anger is this fear and, and deep grief that yeah. she isn't sorry for what she's done and she doesn't recognise what she's done and all that kind of stuff. That's the feelings you're avoiding. Does that make sense? You are yeah. avoiding feeling how bad you feel about what she's done well, by I'm... being angry with her. Uh, yeah, well, I cried at her place the other day. Yeah. But, I mean, that didn't make any difference. Of course, because <laughs> she is totally numb to what she's done. Completely. And, and you crying is just going to make her angry. Yeah, so I can do nothing, really. She's going to pass to the other side. It's not true. It's not true. Oh, okay. I want to continue with the discussion. <laughs> right. What I'm saying, though, is that you have all these emotions inside of you as a result of what she's done, and at the moment you're choosing to maintain this state, yeah. which is a state of you know, repelling her. You want to keep her away from you. You don't want her to damage you anymore. And that's understandable given how much damage she's put on you. You can understand why you feel that way. I'm not saying it's not understandable. Remember I acknowledged in the beginning all of the, ra all of the yeah. bad things mum's done. That's right. yeah. However, if you wait for mum to repair this problem, then you'll be waiting for a long time. Because she's obviously in total denial. I'm not waiting for her. I want to be able to Let, do something. I know what you're doing. Let me finish what you're doing. What you're doing is not even waiting for her anymore. Right? What you're doing is you're just angry with her now. Right? You, you, and you want to hold on to this anger. You would like to hold on to this anger. You don't like it very much, but you feel you're totally justified staying angry with your mum now. I'd like to give it to her, but I can't because she's old and frail. Well, even if you could give it to her, you still can't because it's in you. <laughs> Does that make sense? Like, and you could give it to her, but then you're just doing to her what she's done to you. It wouldn't be very good either. So, so what you finish up doing is that you're holding on to the anger, right? Now, when you hold on to the anger, you're, you're not yet in a position where you can help anybody. Do you understand? And you can't help her if you form an addiction with her and you can't help her if you want her to feel your fear either. The only way to help her is to release all of this right, and get to the point where you now can just feel love for her. That's very, very difficult. I agree. It is very difficult. And that process is called forgiveness. And, and for, for your own sake, you will have to go through that process. Not for hers, for your sake. Because if you do not do it for your sake, this anger will destroy you. Right? It will really harm you. Your body, your physical body it will harm, your spirit body, and it will also harm your soul while you retain these emotions. So at some point, we personally, if we've been hurt by others, at some point we personally have to love myself, I have to love myself enough to actually address these emotions without expecting mum to ever do anything. Does that make sense? Does everyone get that? Like, You have to love yourself enough that you want to no longer have these emotions in yourself and to do that, you're going to have to allow yourself to go right down into the grief of how mum's treated you. When you go down into the grief about mum's, how mum's treated you, you'll release the grief and then you'll have forgiven her. Does that make sense? Now when you forgive somebody, now you're able to love them. When you're able to love them, now what you can do, you can do many things for them. So what I'm suggesting to you is that you can't actually do anything for your mother while you stay in your current state with her. You can only do something for her 
if you decide to go through this process. Because anything you do without going through this process is just a facade. And if we're going to live in harmony with truth and love, without the facade, we can't act upon the facade. So I have to, if I am in a state where somebody has damaged me and I have all these feelings about the damage that they've done, I need to feel my way through all of those feelings and release them from me. Once I've done that, I will forgive the person. It doesn't matter whether they're sorry or not, I will still have forgiven them. And even if I never see them again, I won't be carrying around the damage they've done for the rest of my life. And that is an act of love towards yourself. So the process of forgiveness is not only an act of love towards the other person, but it's also an act of love towards yourself. Can you see that? Yeah. And so if we are truly going to, to help any person who's... And I, and I know one of your concerns is that mum's old now and she's about to pass and you know who knows what's going to happen to her in the spirit world i agree who knows what's going to happen to her in the spirit world well god knows that but not many others do so you know she's aged now and in a lot of ways you're afraid to address these emotions with her because you're afraid of the effects it's going to have on her but it's already having an effect on her uh, she's already having feeling the effects of you having these emotions anyway and in the end your mum is going to have to go through a whole group of emotions about what she's done to you. She will have to. Whether she likes it or not, she will have to. Now, she may at some point in the future embrace that process. But if you wait for her to embrace that process, and you wait until she embraces that process before you allow you to be happy, then you're going to be waiting a long time, potentially. I know that. So that's yeah. why I'm not waiting. Well, no, you are currently are. Yeah, but currently are because you want to maintain this place. Yeah, there's a lot of energy there. Well, when you say there's a lot of energy, um, there might be energy there, but it's not a very good energy for you or for anyone around you, actually. I know, it's horrible. It's horrible, yeah. And, and what we need to do is get out of that place and into the fears and into the grief that we feel. We need to allow ourselves to sink into these emotions and into these emotions about what mum has done. Once you release those emotions, you will now have forgiven her. Once you forgive her, you can now love her. And now when you give her a gift of some kind, it will be only through love and not through some other feeling, some other hateful feeling or revengeful feeling. Now, for this reason, any interaction with her that you currently have is going to be very much surrounding the emotion that you currently feel. Yeah, Yeah, that's correct. That's why I asked the question, because I don't want to carry on like that. Yeah, I understand. Um, firstly, though, you've got to acknowledge that, that the reality is your mum's done a lot of bad things to you. I've already, you know, had years of writings about it. You know? Yes, so you've acknowledged it, but are you feeling it? See, are you allowing yourself to feel the grief of it? really cry about it, how mum's treated you. You see, most of us are willing to acknowledge what's happened, but we're not that willing to go to the emotions of what it feels like as to what's happened. And they are the things that are going to heal us. You see? And they are the things that are going to help us forgive. And then when we forgive, we're in a state of love. Once we're in a state of love, we can help the person. Yeah particularly want to help <laughs> well no you don't have to but once you're in a state of love you'll want to yeah, that, <laughs> does that make sense you. once you've forgiven you've got no reason to not help her and and this has happened to many people in the spirit world where they've had to go through all of these particular emotions and got to the point of forgiveness of the people who've harmed them and i know people who have like I, I know some people in the spirit world who have been pulled apart on a rack tortured to death and they've eventually forgiven the people who did it to them. And actually eventually helped them to find God. Right? The very people who tortured them to death um, over a long period of time. And so it is possible to go through this process, but you have to go through the process as a feeling process. Yeah. Thanks, AG. Pleasure. It's a very good question, what you ask, because... It is one of the main reasons why most people
do not change. They don't, they don't want to get away from this place because it does feel powerful. You know, it feels like, ah, now I'm, now I'm going to make sure this never happens to me again type of feeling, you know. And that face, place feels very powerful, but it's very soul-destroying. And, and so for your own sake, the process of forgiveness is very important to go through. So if, if anybody has ever wronged you, make sure that you do not wait for them to apologise before you forgive them. Because if you wait for them to apologise, you'll be waiting for a long time before you feel good again. Yeah. Now can you explain why she's... why I've been attacked too? Why you've been... Attacked by her? Do you feel you've been attacked? With what she said, I felt... Well, it's interesting that you feel attacked because I didn't feel it was an attack. It was just a statement of how she felt, which is different to an attack. Does that make sense? She can recognise quite clearly that there's obviously feelings and emotions inside of you that remind her of her mother. And that's what's caused you to sit together, actually. Well, I was sitting here. There was a space between us before. <laughs> yeah, if you use the microphone. Here. Use the microphone so you explain. <laughs> So you were sitting there before and she was over there and then she moved towards you even, yes? And can you see how that's, uh, that's something that these are the kinds of attractions that occur just to trigger specific things inside of us, yeah? yeah. But also there's an indication there that uh, there must be some emotions inside of yourself as well that are similar to the emotions that, that her mum has for you to be attracted to sit next to her. And you've got to ask yourself what they are. So, and, and the key is to not judge yourself with it either. It's just the key is to ask yourself what they are. Well, ask yourself what is drawn. Now, there's plenty of people that come and sit right next to me and hate me at the same time, and I don't get offended by it. <laughs> I wasn't really offended. But you were I, offended. <laughs> I, I was curious to, to the statement. Well, no, you feel made. hurt by it. You feel it was an attack, and you feel hurt by it. Whereas many people come up to me and say, hey, Jay, I hate you for this, I hate you for that, and I'm not hurt by it. So, so the fact that you're hurt by it is the place to start. Does that make sense? Admit to the hurt, the fact that somebody feels that you remind her of her mother and her mother has been very damaging to her in her life. Allow yourself to feel the hurt of that. And then allow yourself to go deeper into that. Well, why have I feel so hurt about that? Because it might be something completely unrelated to her mother. Does that make sense? The key is to allow yourself to feel why you feel hurt. So the law of attraction always works perfectly. It doesn't mean that you are like her mother. Does that make sense? So there are many people who come and treat me like I'm their father and I'm not anything like their father, but they treat me like I am. Does that make sense? So just because somebody treats you in a certain manner, it doesn't mean that you are like the person that they don't like or that harmed them in the past. It means that they feel similar things in you or they feel there's certain personality traits that remind you or remind them of your father or, or whatever. Or they have a very strong emotional blockage towards some kind of thing that's in your nature or qualities that, uh, that is their emotional injury. They could also have that. But you've got to feel your way through that. When you feel hurt, you don't feel your way through it. You just feel hurt. And hurt is an anger response. Many of you don't understand that hurt is an anger response. Because uh -huh. when you feel hurt, what are you actually feeling inside? You're blaming the other person for how you feel. See, there's an emotion of blame going towards another person. That's an angry ba response to, the, to, to what's happened. So... so if you get, like somebody says, oh, somebody right next to me feels like they feel like you feel like my mother and you feel hurt by that, you're actually feeling angry about it and you need to acknowledge why. And then when you acknowledge why, you'll get underneath that as to what you're afraid of or what it is or what caused you to come and, and you'll start analysing that a lot more clearly. If you don't do that, then you won't learn from the interaction. But it doesn't mean that from any interaction that you're at fault it just means that there's some kind of thing that's attracted to you. And myself and Mary have thousands of things attracted to us in the course of a day, as you can imagine, many of which are quite negative. Like, you know, I have people emailing me with lots of abuse. Um, 
And that happens. It happens to Mary where she gets things emailed to her, you know, men sexually att attacking her and all sorts of things, right? So these things happen and we've got to look at our... Uh, what, what, what does it feel inside of us? What's the feeling that's being triggered that we need to release? Embrace and release. That's what we need to do. Does that make sense? So let yourself go there. Let yourself feel that hurt and feel the... Like you've been falsely accused of something that you didn't, and you're only sitting there for anyway. <laughs> you've never said anything. <laughs> you're just sitting there, and uh, and let yourself feel about that, and you'll feel feelings of being treated unfairly, and then a lot of those feelings will relate to your own childhood. Does that make sense? Of things that happened in your own childhood where you got treated unfairly, you were accused of things that weren't actually happening, and so forth. That you need to feel about yourself. Mm. Thank you. Right, straight behind. Um, I'm sitting here too with the law of attraction. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that mother um, who did the damage and denial in this in darkness is my mother and the spirit world. Mm -hmm. And you said to me yesterday that I'm still stuck in the anger towards my mother mm -hmm. and I want to deal with this. Mm -hmm. And the next step down is addiction. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at it now and I'm feeling blocked. Could you give me an example? Yeah, sure. When we've been treated really badly when we were little, we automatically form addictions because it, our parents, when they treat us badly, don't allow us to feel our grief. Uh, to give you an example, our parents might come along and smack us for something that we didn't do, for example. They thought we did it, but we didn't do it. Now, in that moment, you feel quite a number of different emotions. You feel unfair, tr unfairly treated. You feel uh, rejected by your parent. You feel misunderstood and quite a number of other different emotions, right? Now, if we're not able to feel the actual emotion, which is unfairness, injustice, and all those emotions, then, then and a lot of times our parents go, you know, I'll belt you if you, you know, cry about this or something like that. So they then put a layer of fear on top of that emotion as well. Then we go into trying to have the addiction met. So what we do in our life then is we... Whenever injustice is around, we are very angry. And whenever we see any injustice, we want to act straight away. right? And this is because we have an unhealed emotion inside of ourselves that, of our own injustice that we're acting upon all the time. And so we're addicted to people who always are just with us. And then the people who are not just, we're addicted to attacking them as well. <laughs> Does that make sense? Because of the underlying grief not being released. Let's say we felt rejected. So, and then our parents didn't want us to cry about the rejection. So now the rejection and the fear of the rejection is in us as well. And so we create an addiction. What's the addiction? We want everybody to accept us, whether they like us or not. <laughs> They've got to accept us. They've got to tell us that, that, that we're good, that we're wonderful and they love us. And, and anybody who doesn't tell us that, no, nah, they're no good. And anybody who does tell us that, and they might be just speaking off the top of their head with no feelings whatsoever, but we accept them because we think they're wonderful because they meet the, the addiction. Does that make sense? Now, these are the addictions that when they are not meant, drives our anger. So, when somebody comes along and doesn't meet your addiction of being told that you're wonderful, now you're angry with them. Does that make sense? But if somebody comes along and does meet your addiction and tells you you're wonderful, even if they don't mean it, you're not angry with them. And the reason why is they're meeting your addiction, which is covering over the grief of the fact that you don't feel very good about yourself and that you want people to tell you that you're good. So everything that we don't allow ourselves to feel about in our grief, we create usually the opposite addiction. So if we were rejected, we want people to never reject us again. If we, we feel listened, not listened to, we want everybody to listen to us. If we feel unloved, we want everybody to love us. If we feel uncared for, then we want people to care for us. If we feel like we had no money, we want people with money around us. You know, and so forth and so forth. We usually set up these addictions. And whenever the addictions are not met, which is fairly frequently in our day-to-day -day life generally, because we have the grief driving that attraction, we skip into anger as a result. Does that make sense? So that's the relationship between the anger of wanting to hold on to the damage is about not looking at what we're addicted to. 
And what, like, so if my mother rejected me, then I'm going to be re addicted to women who accept me. Does that make sense? Because I don't want to feel the emotion of being rejected by a woman. Because as soon as I feel that, it reminds me of my feelings with my mother and it feels terrible. So I don't want to feel that. So I only want women who accept me being in my life after that. And that's my addiction. And then when I attract a woman who's not a person who's very accepting, I feel really angry and frustrated with her and I want to bop her in the nose. And, you know, because she's triggering all of the unhealed grief within me, all the grief I haven't yet released about my mum is being triggered in that emotion. And that tells me that I'm addicted to having a woman feel good about me. That's my addiction. My anger is great because it tells me everything. Yeah. Thank you. And my mother is in the spirit world very angry mm -hmm. and hating me and, and wanting to harm me. Mm -hmm. And I don't... I've been told that I... I, I don't want to have an addiction with her. I, I think I have fear of her. I don't know quite how to... No, no, you, you want to have an addiction with her. Right. Yep. If you, if you look at it, the, the thing you want to do is you want to be angry with her. Like, she's done bad things to you. Of course you want to be angry with her. You want to be, you know, you, you would like to have her get what's coming to her. <laughs> feeling is, is the feeling you have. Now, because you have that feeling towards her, she feels even more inclined to interfere with your life. Does that make sense? The beauty is if once you go through this experience and release the grief, number one what happens to you is that you now no longer feel any feelings of rage or anger or any other feelings towards her. So that's great. She no longer feels any rage feelings or other feelings from you. So, so she's not going to attack you anymore trying to prevent you from attacking her. Does that make sense? And then, and then secondly... It has the effect upon her that you've gone through all this emotionally and now you only feel love for her. And ironically, that's going to make her feel like, wow, you know, she loves me even though I've done all these bad things. And that's going to actually cause her to think more about the bad things she's done. At the moment, all she's thinking about is preventing your attack. So what happens is the angry person who was created by this person who's also angry starts to attack this person and this person is I don't deserve that, I don't want that, I'm going to attack you back and then the person gets, I'm going to attack you again, I'm going to attack you again I'm going to attack you again, <laughs> attack you again like so, right? <laughs> Do you feel a bit of that emotion? Yeah. And, and we end up with this constant stream of attack going back and back and forth. Now those people are bound together by rage. Their mutual rage for each other binds them together. Right? Now, you don't want a life like that. Right? So the only way to avoid a life like that is to actually go into yourself and into your grief and eventually get there and forgive. Once you forgive, you're no longer inclined to attack back no matter what attack comes at you from anyone. And as a result of that, you're in a state of love no matter how another person is responding to you. Once you're in that place, you are now no longer governed by your relationship with that individual. Does that make sense? You're no longer controlled by your rage. You're no longer controlled by your fear or your grief. You've released all of those things. So you're no longer controlled by them. Any emotion you refuse to release, you will be controlled by. So if you refuse to release grief, you will be controlled by your grief. Your denial of grief will control your life. If you refuse to release fear, your fear, the denial of your fear, will control your life. The rest of your life will be controlled by that emotion. If you refuse to release your addictions, your addictions will control the rest of your life. Does that make sense? Any emotion you refuse to address will control the rest of your existence until you release the emotion. And that makes no difference whether you pass or not. You can pass over and if you pass to the spirit world and you still have that particular emotion, you are going to be controlled by it. until, And it's going to rule your life until you work your way through it. So my suggestion is to not wait and work your way through them right now as fast as you can that's fantastic thank yeah. you very much yeah
So you get also the relationship between the anger and the addictions. Yeah, you can see that many times, many times the person who has harmed us the most is the person that we have the most addictions with. Because they are the person who did not meet all of our needs. And they are the person we desperately want to meet all of our needs. So if our mother treated us badly, we will have most of our addictions with our mother, most probably. If our father treated us badly, we'll have most of our addictions with our father. If both of them treated badly, then we're going to have a mixture, obviously. But usually it's the parent who treats us the worst that we have the most addictions with. So the parent that didn't like us the most, the parent that treated us the worst, they are the ones that we have most of our work to do with because they, they are the ones that we have most addictions. And we, and we are so specific with our addictions sometimes that we only want them to fulfil it. <laughs> and no other person will do. So, you know, like... When it, when it comes to, let's say, daddy has hurt us in a certain way, we will want daddy to fix it. We want daddy to make it better. And then we're waiting, waiting, waiting for daddy. And we'll, we'll try and get these other man substitutes substituting for daddy. But it doesn't matter how much they substitute for daddy, I still want my dad to sort this issue out, right? And the reason why is because our addictions are often also very specific. They specifically relate to the individual who never gave us the feeling that we desperately needed or wanted at the time. Yeah. And we need to get rid of that if we're ever going to have a happy life. 